The National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum presents Pointers from the Pros. Yeah, I started out my career throwing a, a, a four-seam slider, and it was really tight and late-breaking is what really gave me the ability to not only get some strikeouts, but get them off my fastball. And I threw it in a way where, where the fastball would be like this, my slider would be like this, but the difference is at release, we had the throw, turn, and pull in. So I created a lot of torque and my fingers were behind the ball and could really get the ball to break late. And then after Tommy John, the one thing that I learned to do is I couldn't re rep duplicate that, that kind of slider. So I went to an off-center slider, more traditional slider, and that really allowed me not to miss a beat. And I would change the break based on how I would turn more or less the ball in my hand. So everything for me was a field pitch. And I could change the break in the strike zone based on the way that I would manipulate the baseball right at the end. And if I wanted a tighter slider, it was more of a tighter short break out in front. If I wanted to sweep the slider slash slurve, I would take the, and really have more of a loose hand and loose fingers breaking through. So this really got me right back to where I needed to be after Tommy John, but the pitch that made me was the four seam slider because that, di that dot, that red dot that would be very small is the one thing hitters didn't like to see. I can see you doing that on the mound early in your career. I can see you doing this when you just did that. Was there, did you feel it on your arm? Or was there, was there that kind of No, thing? I never did. You know, the biggest thing about throwing any pitch is that mechanically you've got to use your body to throw it. And if you bang any part of keeping your elbow, you never want your elbow to be straight out. So I always cushion my elbow and add this ability to throw a little bit across my body. I think what did me in a little bit more than anything was all those postseason innings. You know, you talk about postseason and there's stress on that each pitch two times greater than a regular season game. So if you can imagine pitching almost 200 postseason innings, what that does, um, that allowed me to obviously do the, some really good things, but it also put a lot of stress, less recovery. Um, the biggest thing mechanically, the one thing that I was able to do fortunately that I could overcome a lot of these injuries is I would repeat my mechanics. And I made adjustments along the way to uh, the necessary adjustments to become better. By the end, did you get on, on the page with your catch, especially when you were going to the secondary slider, where they knew, okay, we're going to call this slider as opposed to that one? I asked my catchers, do you mind when I throw a breaking ball off a slider? And they said, no, as long as it, they knew it's going to break. And the one good thing about my slider, for the most part, and my curveball, it rarely, if ever, backed up. That's the key. If you know your slider is going to break and break a certain way, you can trust that you're going to throw it in an area. The biggest problem with sliders and the reason why they're home run pitches is when they don't break as much or back up. That's the perfect spin for a launch angle for great hitters to hit it over the fence. So yes, I gave up my share of home runs, but the reality of, of, of the catching end, they had trust that when I threw a breaking ball, it could be any breaking ball and they were ready for it, which allowed me to not have to go to a lot, of, a lot more signs.